The summertime events have landed in Kingdom 2, which means they'll be arriving in every kingdom in just a couple days. Let's give you everything you need to know to prepare and get some sweet rewards with these events. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and this video has been sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. Today, we're showing you the summertime events which are in Kingdom 2, which means they're going to show up in the next day or two in your kingdom, in every kingdom. So, the first event we need to, of course, talk about is the five-day quest series. We've seen this many, many times, and there are two currencies that you're going to be collecting during this event window. One of those currencies is going to be embers. That you're going to collect by logging in every single day. The other currency you're going to collect is burned branches. No religious connotation, presumably here. <laughs> you're going to go collect all of these things. And I'll just say for those of you that are newer to the game, day three is going to have a bunch of gold key quests by battling barbarian forts. Day two is going to have a lot of barbarians that you need to smash, 300 in total. But don't worry about getting every single quest done. The rewards for this chest in the upper right are linear. And for newer players, I mean, the epic sculptures are really important. For players that have been doing this for a while, the epic commander sculptures really are not worth very much. So you don't have to get every single quest done. Just get done the ones you get done. And the rewards are linear. So it's not like those rewards are going to jump up a ton for actually getting to 100% completion. Now, the thing that you're probably more interested in is the bonfire dance. The bonfire dance is where you can trade in some of those, uh, I guess, burning bushes or what were burning bush. Now, now I've gone fully religious. You turn in branches and get burned branches. That's what it is. Turn in the branches, you get burned branches. You also can exchange 50 gems for a torch we're going to talk about why that's important in just a second. As your alliance goes and does this event, 10 times you'll be able to collect the chest over here for exchanging in these branches for the burned branches. There is a ranking system, but honestly, like the rewards are not all that insane for being a top rank anyways. I mean, you could shoot for it, but I don't think it's all that important. Just collect the rewards as you go here. Uh, the way that you'll get those branches to turn in, by the way, is map collection city collection, and defeating barbarians. Now, at, at pretty much City Hall level 16 from that point and beyond, you should be running the production boosters for your farm and your lumber mill and your mine and your quarry. You should be having those running all the time because it's just resources and it's net positive. But if you don't normally run those, definitely run them during this event window to get more of the branches to pop up. You can defeat barbarians, and it's going to take a lot of action points to get your branches that way. And, of course, map collection. From what I've heard, you used to be able to gather in small amounts and get a huge amount of branches while gathering. I don't think that's true anymore. So the most grindable thing here is going to be spending AP on barbarians, which may or may not be worth it depending on what you need. Let me show you what you'll ultimately be exchanging for. First and foremost... The premium reward is a city skin, the Blooming Court Permanent Skin. This gives you archer health at the cost of infantry health, which if you're rallying archers, that's really good. If you use archers in the field and you don't use infantry, it's really good. But for the most part, it's honestly not all that exciting of an open field city skin because I think most people are using archers and infantry and probably some cavalry too. So if you're using all those different unit types, I would not want to be losing infantry health. I really don't think that's amazing. You'd probably want to use a different city skin. But for Rally, for Garrison with Archers, I think this is a good pickup. To obtain this, it's going to take 100 of the premium currency, that is embers, and 200 of those burned branches. There is also a three-day version of this skin, which is more compelling than it used to be. That is largely because if you stop using the skin then it, it doesn't actually burn down your cooldown for your total time remaining. So you can only, you know, swap onto it when you really need it for a rally or garrison and then swap off if you remember. And that'll preserve your city skin pretty well. So that actually is a pretty decent pickup over there. There's a cosmetic, the Fairy Harp. There are legendary commander sculptures. Hello. This is going to require 20 embers. 
those were 50 gems a pop. So it's like a thousand gems per sculpture. It's a reasonable amount of gems per sculpture, but I generally much prefer things like a Wheel of Fortune for getting sculptures because you get the tiered rewards as well as all the stuff from your spins. There are gold stars here, but more importantly, hey, hey look at that. Pick one, Choice Chest, Silent Trial, Delane's Amulet, or Peter's Sickle. I mean, I think obviously your choice is going to be between the Silent Trial and the Delane's Amulet. I'll have a card up in the top if you want my full breakdown on which of those two are the is kind of the better one to go and get. I personally think that probably the Silent Trial is where I've been landing. A lot of people will argue for that Delane's, but check out that video linked in the info section. There are also some equipment material choice chests for 10 embers and four of the burned branches. I think that the most important thing to pick up in here is going to be number one, the city skin. And if you are either not getting that or have already obtained it, then to go and get the accessory pick one chest because that is giving you one completed blueprint. Totally amazing. Totally amazing. And, you know, between the two of these things, by the way, the silent trial is way harder to get. It's a much bigger pain in the butt than a Delane's amulet. Part of the reason I'm advocating for that. So there is almost certainly, in fact, I guarantee you, there'll be one other way to go and get a ton of these embers, and that is going to be a bundle. Historically, these bundles are very good. I'll have a card up in the top for the last time that we had a summer event, and you can see what the bundle was then. Maybe it'll be a little of a preview of what we have in store. Probably it'll be a pretty good deal. That would be my suspicion here. And there are other events, by the way, on the calendar that we do need to talk about. There is a Zenith of Power event just days away. This is a major power gain event awarding a legendary tier city skin. 5% skill damage and 5% damage to barbarians at the cost of 10% cavalry attack. Now, I'll tell you when I last did testing, 10% attack did better than 5% skill damage for Rally and Garrison with a specific troop type. But subsequently, they have released the Season of Conquest technology, which gives a ton of attack. And in that world, maybe the skill damage is better. I genuinely don't know. It's probably pretty comparable, though, to that 10% attack. It's probably pretty close at this point. So I actually really like the Island Fortress Permanent City skin for open field. Because, okay, you lose 10% cav attack, but you're not losing health. You're not losing defense. Those are the premium stats. Yeah, this is a great city skin for open field, for smashing barbs, of course, and potentially for rally and garrison for things other than cavalry, of course. Comedically, cavalry is kind of the meta right now. What I will say is that they've added durations for this city skin other than having a permanent version. I think they had like a seven-day version and maybe a three-day version in the rewards previously. And I mentioned that because, as I was saying earlier, you could go and just use this for brief moments in KVK, then cycle to a different skin and get some pretty decent value out of even having the not permanent version of this skin if you were to obtain it. Now, there are also some legendary commander sculptures and material crates at the very top here. This is one of the most harrowing events to try to win. It is a cross-continent event. You are competing against eight kingdoms, your own kingdom and seven others. It's really tough to win. I mean, you need north of probably 30 million power gain, depending on your continent, to get a top, I think it's 10 placement, to get one of these permanent city skins. It might be top 20 I think it was top 10, maybe it's top 20, uh, but I'll have a card up in the top for a time when I did this, and it's so harrowing, trust me on that one. Now, there is also an arms training event uh, at the same time, almost as Zenith Power, I guess it's a day later, and it looks like, of course I need to verify myself here, but it looks like that event is going to be giving you a pick one boot pattern, and that's a legendary pick one boot pattern which is kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So you can choose among Shields Return, Mountain Crushers, and Commander's Boots. And that's where the coolness ends. Because although I like the idea of a pick one, if it doesn't also give you the option to pick the set boots, I mean, look, like we all probably have lots of Shields Return from doing Lost Canyon. 
you've probably, I mean, got no interest in the Mountain Crusher or the Commander's Boots, the way that the meta is designed right now. That said, they are looking at maybe changing up equipment. So it could be that just having the more patterns is, is just better in case some changes are really major. Arms trading event. If you want to see how to crush that, I'll have a card up in the top. But the short version is that you typically just need to buff the ever-living heck out of your march that's battling the arms trading Lohar uh, with other nearby marches that you control. That's who's going to win it all, whoever buffs themselves the most. Now, you can, of course, see on my screen, Soroli Assault is in Kingdom 2 as well. Hopefully, we'll see this in all kingdoms as well in just a couple days. This is a pretty straightforward event I've found where you basically Zerg a boss and you have a special currency in the upper right there, Horns of Soroli, and you recover them very slowly. So in a day or two, I mean, you're going to want to log in right at reset and you're going to want to use up your horns really quickly so they start to regenerate during this event window. You'll go in and you'll do some battles. Battling will give you some number of tickets to open up a chest. There are different items contained in this chest, including core rewards and base rewards. You will randomly pull from the core and base rewards, and once you have obtained all of the core rewards from this chest, you'll have the option to reset to a new chest, which you should definitely do immediately because those rewards are going to be way better for the core chest in the next chest rather than these base rewards are pretty basic. Your goal with this event really is to get through the core rewards of as many of these chests as you can get through. And I think there's typically three that you can get during the event and then you get to a sort of basic chest that you rip open you know over and over i guess infinitely i don't quite remember uh, there is a quick mode and a challenge mode challenge mode is where you get to pick your team quick gives you some bonus experience and my experience is that generally it's really fast to find a match and you smash through it really quickly there's just one problem if this event is only in kingdom two right now and I'm not even on the hardest difficulty, I genuinely don't know how long it's going to take for me to find a match so I can show you this event. But you can see you pick a tank or support or DPS. I imagine you only need one tank. You probably only need a couple support. Most people should be DPS. You run your way through this a couple times, get those rewards, and it's honestly pretty straightforward. By the way, it does look like this is in Kingdom... Well, you can see now 1590 is on my screen. So this is in some kingdoms besides just Kingdom 2. Look, 1925 just popped up. All right, so it's in a bunch of kingdoms, and maybe it'll show up in 75. It's not my in my home kingdom right now. Maybe it'll be there soon. But if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, throw a like on here, and consider subscribing so that you don't miss the next time we're able to show you new events before they land in every kingdom. And of course, we'll be showing you a sneak peek at the Zenith of Power as soon as that is on its way into the game, which will be in two days. So again, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.